Hey everybody, it's Tobin, and we are going to customize the Quality of Life Dashboard version 2 for a new location. Dashboard version 2 is released. Yippee! Uh, grab it, download it, use it, love it. Mecklenburg hasn't released our version of it yet publicly because we ran into some stuff with our data and calculations. Uh, but it will be out soon. The open source project is ready, so have at it. If you customize the first version of the dashboard for your location, you know that was challenging to say the least. For the new version, it is much, much, much easier. So let's hop right into it. Let's see. If you're looking for the first version of the dashboard code on GitHub, it's now in a V1 branch. Master is the current release, which is version 2. First thing you need to do is install Node. That's available for whatever platform you're on. Uh, Linux, Mac, Windows. So just get that installed. It's in your uh, repos if you're on Linux. After that's installed, you use the Node Package Manager, or NPM, to install a few global dependencies. Those being Gulp, Topo JSON, and Bower. Now, if you're on Windows, to install TopoJSON, you will need a C compiler. Windows is the only operating desktop OS that doesn't come with one. But if you have Visual Studio or Visual Studio Express on there, you're probably fine. If you don't, install Visual Studio Express. It's free, it's a C compiler, and everything will just work. So, yay Windows! Once you have that done, you can use clone the project, git clone, or if you don't have git and don't feel like opening that can of worms, just download the zip file and put it somewhere. So now you've got your global dependencies, you've got the project file somewhere, you'll need to install the project dependencies. And that's just as simple as going to the project folder and typing npm install and then typing bower install. Those will get your node and bower components. I already typed npm install because it takes a little time. We'll just go bower install and that will automatically go fetch all of our dependencies. Our uh, leaflet, our jQuery, our bootstrap, all that kinds of stuff. So now we're ready to go. We'll just go gulp. Well, let's see, let's launch our text editor here first. I'm using Atom. Use whatever you would like. And we'll just type gulp and off it'll go. There we are. We're looking at the project running right here on our machine just like it would uh, on Mecklenburg's site if we'd released ours yet. Yeah, it's coming soon. You can get started. It'll flash where you should go next. I'm not going to give you a whole version 2 of the dashboard demo, although it's awesome. You can play around with it yourself now because you've got it set up on your local machine. You can switch metrics. You can select things. You can make a report and everything will just kind of work right here on our local machine. And we have a live reload server running, so we could do silly stuff like... Uh, Let's say go into our main less file and change the body color from white to, I don't know, uh, this kind of green and hit save. And you notice it automatically changed the styling right in our site to green. So all that's working. We have a full awesome thing going. We'll change it back to white because that was ugly. Ready to go dashboard. Now we have Mecklenburg's version up and running. We can customize it for our location. So we're going to exit out of Gulp here. Go back to our instructions. We fired it up. First thing we're going to do is we're going to swap out the search. The search is set up so it'll search for addresses and stuff that's hitting a Mecklenburg service that aren't going to help you. We're going to go gulp in it to swap that out. It'll swap out a basic search that will search through your metrics and through your neighborhood IDs. 
What it'll do is make a search advanced file, which isn't being used. That is Mecklenburg. So you'll see how you can add your own local services if you want to, to that search. It's a Twitter type ahead control is what it is. Now that that's done, we'll go looking through our data. The data we have is, is three or more. Well, there's like three pieces, but there could be more than three files. We're going to have our geography, which just has the geography and the ID, and that's in TopoJSON to make the file really small. That ID will link to our metric file, which has the ID and has Y underscore and the year that data is for, for every year you have data for. So you could have one column, you could have 10 columns, as many as you want, one per year. And in that column will be that neighborhood ID will be where those intersect will be the value for that neighborhood and that year. If you don't have any data for that neighborhood for that year, just leave it blank. And it'll treat that as we got nothing for that neighborhood for that year. Now the metric file will be named something depending on what it is. If it's raw data, it will be R, the number of that metric, dot CSV. And these are CSV files. If it's normalized data, it will be N. Normalized data is like raw data would be population. Normalized would be population density. It's normalized by the area. Normalized data will be N, the number for that metric, and CSV. And if you have data that you want to renormalize, like say you want to show population density, but you want it to do a weighted average if you pick more than one neighborhood, you will have R for the raw, which is population. You'd have a D file for, if you're doing it by acre, it would be the acres per neighborhood. And then it would automatically calculate all that stuff on the fly for you. And you will have a metadata file, which is just marked down formatted very simply with some metadata for that particular metric. Sounds confusing, but since it's a bunch of small files in common formats, it is very easy to work with. It's very easy to add additional years. It's very easy to add additional metrics. First thing we're going to do is make our topo.json file. So we're going to go back, back and out of the dashboard folder here and over to this wake folder. And we've got a Wake County shape file, and that is just census tracts in this case. It has a field called ID, which is our census tract number, which we're going to use for our neighborhood ID. This is QGIS 2.8 Wien or Veen. I don't know how it's pronounced, but it is pronounced awesome in my book. Here's our Topo JSON command. We're just going to pipe it over here. It's doing a little simplification. You can customize that to whatever you want. Our shapefile is called wake. We'll want to remember that for later. And our ID field is just called ID. Makes our topo JSON file. Instead of a 1.4 megabyte shapefile, we have a 56 kilobyte topo JSON file. Much, much better across the wire. So we've got that. Let's do our metrics. You know, so we have some metrics stored in here, these CSV files, and we have some markdown files for our meta. We're going to copy all that over. We'll go back to our dashboard and there's a gulp command to wipe out our old data. So we'll go gulp. Uh, I think it's clean dash data. Let's double check and make sure we're not ruining our whole lives. Let's see, go file, boom, bah, 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 clean data. And I'll get rid of our old CSV and markdown and our geography topo JSON. Mm -hmm. Clean all that up. So now when we look in our source folders, dashboard, source, data, metric, we got a big bupkis. Let's see, let's just copy this stuff in, go back to our wake folder, and here's our markdown for meta, and for our metric, we'll grab our CSV files, 
we've got all that put in and in our distribution folder we will drop in our new geography .json. so we've done that we're going to go gulp data gen to generate all of our data what it does is it converts our markdown to HTML and our CSV files to JSON. Now we've got all our data loaded. We only have one thing left to do and we're ready to try this sucker out. We're going to go to config.js, which is in our source scripts folder, and we are going to configure our stuff. Just going down the list, Google Analytics key, you'll want to change that to what yours is. We'll just leave it the same for here. Neighborhood descriptor, we're now dealing with census tracts. We'll change that to track. Neighborhood definition kind of pops up, so we'll change that to census tracts. Nobody knows how these get made. Someone probably knows, but I don't. Base tiles, let's change this to base tiles that will actually have base tiles. Because what's pointed there right now just has Mecklenburg's. I don't tile the whole world, sorry. Contact info for an email. We'll just ignore that, it's not a big deal. Center, we're gonna change where this thing starts out zoomed into, to the middle of Wake County. You can also change the min zoom, max zoom, and where the zoom starts. We can leave that the same in this case. Neighborhoods, this is the subtype in your topo JSON file since our Shapefile is called wake. This is just going to be called wake. We don't have any other subtypes for streets, so we'll just comment that out. Leave the color breaks the same. And now we do our metric configuration. And for every metric we have, we do a little configuration which has a minimum of four things. The metric number, and this is just a unique number. The type, it could be some mean and normal or normalized and that affects the type of file it looks for if it's some it, and the metric is number one it's going to look for an r1 if it's mean it's going to look for an n1 if it's normalized it's going to look for an r1 and a d1 category is the subtype of data and title is just what we want to call it these other things are optional you could have an accuracy file associated with your data you could have a different label for units. You could have number of decibels if it's not zero. Raw label will let you put in a raw file uh, for like a normalized value in, in like a subtext. So if you had a raw file for pop, or if your normalized was population density, it would show under that little text. Maybe the population is what you want to put there. So I'm not going to make you watch me type all of this stuff because that would be cruel and unusual. We're going to scroll down here, wipe this out, and I'm going to put in a metric config for our Wake County data, which by the way is totally made up. So if you see any patterns here, it's in your imagination. We've got five metrics all in the category of demographics and most are mean, one is a sum, and we have our different little bits of here. Like if it's a percentage value, you'd put in the optional suffix and give it a percentage. If it was a money value, you might put in the optional uh, prefix and put in a dollar sign, things like that. We've got that all put in. We are going to build our project so it rereads all of our JavaScript changes to the configuration. And that'll take it a few seconds to do that. In the meantime, we can all bite our nails and wonder what we might have done wrong here. It could be any number of things. And what this does when you do a gulp build is it takes the JavaScript and concatenates and compresses it and it uh, does the same for your less and runs it through auto prefixer and some other stuff so it takes a little while but it will eventually get there when it does we're going to type gulp are you nervous cross your fingers it will launch our live reload server come on wake county 
There's Wake County. We just customized the dashboard for Wake County. We see we have Wake County here. We have everything in this type called demographics. You can change it here and it does all of our stuff. You can select neighborhoods. Oh, it says selected tracks. You click on that, it gives our definition for the tracks. And we can go over to a report. And it'll make a report. It's showing the tiles from uh, our, our I, think, I think I just have a Cardo DB tiles it's showing here. Zoomed in. There's our demographics and all of our numbers. You've got a dashboard for Wake County. Your course not quite done yet. You'll probably want to change titles and headers and footers. A couple things are on the report are kind of custom. Like this grid here. And if you had wanted a chart up here it's kind of custom but all of that is set generally speaking in the html in data attributes if we look at report.html and go up to that grid all it's doing is you have an h3 here with data metric and it's our metric number we happen to have one r5 that existed in both so it showed that one number so you can customize that to be whatever you want, or you can delete that entirely. The charts are done by category, and it's just these little templates. So you can make a new chart type, and transportation is a category in Mecklenburg. You change this to demographics, and these things to demographics. And then the chart data will have your metrics you want to see, what labels you want to show for those. It's generally set all this up in the HTML with data attributes and not have to monkey with any JavaScript whatsoever. So that's it. We just customized the dashboard for Wake County. Congratulations Wake County. You have a dashboard with completely made up data. It's that easy to get going in your location. It's much much easier than it was before. Now that the dashboard is ready. So take it, download it, use it, love it. Thanks, guys. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.